back of all that stuff, happening with Gigi and Kanye, we've got this slipping crazy stuff, right? Happening with um, Tremaine and Kanye West, which again, I said, exposes, I feel like, the overall nonsense of the fashion industry, personally for me. Because I've said for a lot, the longest time, and I was saying this, I've been saying this for a while, ever since maybe, ever since maybe um, uh, racism, sorry, um, slavery was a choice. I was saying that from then. Especially from an outsider's point of view, especially being somebody that's a huge Kanye West fan, somebody that you legitimately used to run home to watch clips of him ranting, you know, at, on his shows and stuff. Because I felt those quote, those kind of rants to be super inspirational. Um, somebody that was rooting for him in terms of him getting ownership and being able to produce the stuff that he wants to produce on level wants to produce it at. I was one of those vocal people out there, kind of, you know, as other Kanye West fans, kind of defending him, quote unquote, online. But when he started to heel turn and become this person he was, I quickly distance myself from him as a person just so that you know i'm just gonna enjoy the stuff that he puts out i'll separate the art from the artist because i've kind of been lucky enough because of maybe my interest i have a lot of things that i'm interested in where there's a lot of questionable individuals a lot of questionable publications sponsors whatever it may be and i had to do that a lot the dance of separating the art from the artist because most of the stuff i listen to you know if you really dig deep and kind of do the homework and do the research do the science a lot of these people men or women are very questionable right morally ethically whatever it may be so i found it hard easy to do that but more people haven't but a lot of people haven't found it so easy to separate both if they don't like you as a person it's very hard for them to support you as they are and i know that for a fact to be a lot of people stance in the scene like industry people i know that a lot of them are you know they're quite aligned politically they're quite aligned in terms of their worldview they're quite aligned in terms of their priorities in terms of their interests and goals they all kind of have the similar sort of thing they like to pretend they were different but generally they're the same and i knew for a fact these guys behind the scenes don't like what this guy is doing but they're not saying anything publicly they're just remaining stum they're going to all the flipping listing parties they make maintaining their own that flipping easy seed list but they're not saying a jack shit they're not saying anything and it really used to aggravate me i used to say or mention it online twitter like these guys are like throwing subs and whatnot but not saying anything publicly they don't want to ruin their link or connect with kanye they want to ruin their, their exceeding list opportunity really easy but they're letting him get away with all this bullshit but then they want to call out the white man or kind of the boogeyman that exists over there but it's like bruv this guy's doing fucking worse probably damage if you want to go down that route right Jeremy? You know I mean? because he's somebody that's actually of the culture he's actually somebody that you know has played an instrumental role in these people's lives and whatnot i don't think the head of youtube or whatever is doing that much whatever it don't matter let's move on from that one but it was so cool so refreshing to see somebody that's actually associated with kanye an actual close friend of his and somebody that's been around them overall tremaine emery who's obviously the founder of denim tears um step up and say something about the situation because i feel like this has been this has been something that a lot of people are wanting to say, but they've not had the guts or the balls to say it, basically, not had the courage. Or maybe it's because Kanye in general does do this thing where he purposely doesn't have people around him that disagree with him. He doesn't like to explain himself too tough, as you've seen. He doesn't like to articulate his points. He just wants you to accept what he says, like in a tyrannical way, and that's it. So maybe how he acts pushes people away. But I do have the feeling that a lot of people around him have enabled him to the point where he is this person that he is now. Because I'm, I'm going to be controversial with this as well and say, I don't necessarily think it's a good or bad thing. I'm not, I don't care about these people that deep. It's not good or bad. It's just at this point in time, he's this person. But I know these guys behind the scenes don't like this person, but they pretend like they do because they want to be like down. You know what I mean? They want to make sure they're not basically putting another black man down in public which i understand the sentiment behind it but i just don't like the double standards you can't not not comment on stuff that he says or does that's detrimental but then you want to point at the boogeyman over there it's like no comment on the person right next to you, do you know what i mean that guy's doing just as much damage if not more but anyway regardless Tremaine did step up and say something so that's definitely something to be credited and noted for before so obviously as you can see from Tremaine's instagram profile he was obviously supporting um gabriella anyway right in his own way and i thought the most telling part was this little sub that he threw out where he basically took a screenshot of this term which i had no idea existed called a judas goat and it's as follows a judas goat is a trained goat 
is uh, is a trained goat used in general animal herding. The Judas goat is trained to associate the sheep or cattle, leading them to a specific destination. In stockyards, a Judas goat will lead sheep to slaughter, while its own life is spared. Judas goats are also used to lead other animals to specific pens and onto trucks. They have fallen out of use in recent times, but can still be found in very smaller slaughterhouses in some parts of the world, as well as con conservation projects. Cattle herders may use a Judas steer to serve as the same purpose as a Judas goat. The technique and term originated from the cattle drivers of the United States in the 1800s. The term is a reference to Judas Iscariot, an apostle of Jesus Christ who betrayed Jesus in the Bible. So pretty self-explanatory. So it's basically Tremaine calling Kanye a Judas goat, right? He led us to this place, but eventually he was always going to lead us to our downfall. And obviously little Tremaine Tia supporting um, Gabriella here putting the quotation marks of beautiful in the caption obviously lending uh, a kind of nod to virgil abloh uh, you know which is pretty cool to see and then of course the final post which is the death nail the real blow that i think exposed the whole sham that is the flipping industry the culture the scene streetwear wherever it may be is this post here because we all knew this deep down i knew this deep down having analyzed and seen certain things and keeping my own things and obviously being a fan and caring about this stuff way more than i actually should i had a feeling this stuff was obviously the case but someone putting out there in plain black and white is pretty trippy so it's just Tremaine's post where he basically um takes a screenshot of Kanye's post where that he deleted where he said the following Kanye said spank my hand with rulers I'll go sit in the principal's office can't we talk about more important things like how the late show was or Bernard I know killed my best friend everyone's got a right for the opinion right there's mine so Kanye is essentially saying but I don't know was the reason why he can't Virgil Abloh passed away. like is it even worth entertaining the idea no but that was his kind of interpretation of the events and whatnot and how he feels and Tremaine laid it out pretty plainly said the following I gotta draw a line at you using Virgil's death in your yay is the victim campaign in front of your sycophant peanut gallery <laughs> algorithm and you know what's funny about this just before I continue I had a feeling something untoward happened between them because i was actually watching a lecture i think that denim tears did on the off-white channel i think no it wasn't off-white channel i think it might be the virtual Ablo youtube channel there's like a series of lectures there where he basically gets a lot of his friends to give lectures or to give like um what they called mentoring kind of lectures or whatever um things on their in on their career trajectory on their inspirations on their brand just to kind of lend support to i forgot the charity that virgil Abra supports behind it but it's a pretty cool series there's one with heron press and there's one with um uh tremaine on there also and he mentioned he was basically going through his cv and saying the stuff that he's done jobs wise it got very detailed in it right shared a lot of kind of personal details i don't think he shared before in other interviews and he specifically said in that interview or in that presentation i was at yeezy i got fired from that like he said something like that in that kind of way and if you know anything about seeing people no one mentions how they got fired why they got fired if they got fired in places you know people always hush hush you just try and play the clout and politic game and fake it to you make a game but the fact that he made a point to say that he left or he got fired i forgot which one i think it was fired I was like huh that must explain a lot then because i don't really see him regularly with kanye as much as he was in the past he was like he was like kanye's um he was at Kanye's uh, ASAP Bari. Now that ASAP Bari has become like, you know, the, the new Tremaine, like in terms of being his kind of guy, right? And you haven't seen him with them together a lot. Um, he doesn't really post about Kanye stuff on his Instagram at all anymore. It's just all Virgil stuff, right? Which is weird. But I knew something was off. So this explains a lot of it. He continues the caption. Your best friend, Virgil. Negro, please. This time last year, you said Virgil's designs are a disgrace to the black community in front of all your employees at Yeezy. Ask Lit, L L how do you say it? Lucette, Lucette Holland, I guess that person's name is. I got all the receipts. Don't let me get into the things you said about Virgil after his death. Yay, tell people why you didn't get invited to Virgil's actual funeral, the one before the public one at the museum, and why you weren't allowed to speak at the public funeral. You knew Virgil had terminal cancer and you rode on him in group chats, at Yeezy, at interviews, on songs. You are so broken. Keep Virgil's name out of your mouth. Keep Gabriella's name out of your mouth. You're not a victim. You're just an insecure narcissist that's dying for validation from the fashion world. Take care. At least we'll have always have Uganda. I'm not sure if Uganda's a reference to him going there and running amok and giving free shoes to that 
dodgy president or prime minister, I don't know how it works in Uganda. I'm not sure if that's the case, but regardless, that is a pretty brutal and telling read and also exposes quite a lot of things that I had a feeling were happening behind the scenes that no one wanted to talk about because, again, like I said, Kanye seemed to have this weird grip on people where essentially he bought their silence with collaborations. I don't know what's happening there, but it just seemed odd. But essentially, all these guys are quite politically aligned. So to have somebody that is so... It's so sort of like opposite what they think in terms of polit politics and societal. It just didn't make any or societal issues. So it just didn't make any sense why they didn't say nothing publicly. But again, they all kind of get encouraged now to start saying things openly. The obviously the telling part in all of this, the really hard bit to take, especially if you're a Kanye West fan, and obviously if you're a fan of Virtual like I am, clearly as you've seen the stuff on my channel is the comments around Virgil Abloh's death and about their friendship or their lack of um, during the time he was alive and obviously um, during the time he was sick as well. That's really telling, really bloody telling. Um, the fact that he's making a point to say that this guy, Kanye, was disparaging Virgil to everybody that would basically lend him an ear. The same way that he tries to, you know, tell his life story or try and get everyone to swipe his problems where he's on radio doing interviews he obviously does that in private too so anybody that's willing to listen to him rant about the industry and why he isn't where he needs to be and blah 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 would hear him disparage Virgil's name and what is clear to me at least I think most people would agree with this what is clear at least to me is that that whole Virgil getting the Louis Vuitton job damaged their relationship more than anyone will ever know more so on the side of Kanye, because I feel like for whatever reason, Virgil seemed to be the consummate professional. He had a very forgiving spirit overall. You know, him getting dunked on during that whole time with the whole $5 donation thing during the whole um, George Floyd RIP protests that were happening in the States. Like, so many negative things in the press. He seemed to be incredibly forgiving. He didn't hold grudges at all. That was just the nature of the game. He just kept it moving. So I would imagine most of it was mostly on Kanye's side. But... It needs to be said that that whole him not getting the job or sorry, Virgil getting a job before Kanye definitely ruined their relationship to the point where Kanye was still holding on to that grudge on Virgil's deathbed, bruv. On his deathbed, he was holding that grudge to it. And that, I think, is the clearest example of him being a pretty disgusting human being, pretty vile. And the thing that annoys me about this whole thing for the most part is that what it also proves is that they all knew this. All these friends... And collaborators knew that he has how an awful guy he is. I think they said about people behind their back, but they didn't say a word. Not, 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 not an inch. Nothing. Zero. They all pretend like they didn't hear it. They all minding their business and stuff. But when it comes to other issues, societal issues, things in culture that you know that are a bit more far removed from them, they're the first to speak up and say something. And even now, in the in the kind of residue of this beef. I think Tremaine's been the only vocal person from that whole scene of whole collective people around him who's actually said something with his whole chest. There have been people who have left comments buried in someone else's page you have to kind of dig through or somebody who posted their own story. But somebody has actually posted something on their main feed and actually made their point known. And as he said, Tremaine, in the caption here, he's drawing a line in the sand. He's the only person to do it so far. So you have to give the guy props. The only person to do it. Everyone else is kind of running scared and doing what they're doing. And then, of course... Kanye is doing what Kanye does and essentially he's saying that I think he's saying in the in one of the posts I remember him reading something along the lines of he thinks that Bernard Arnault the CEO of the you know whatever of flipping LVMH is the person behind sending Tremaine to kind of attack him because Tremaine was the supreme but the funny thing about it is that LVMH don't own supreme it's VF Corp VF Corp sorry completely different company completely different venture capitalists whatever you want to call them right so he obviously is confusing them. Either he's confusing the two companies or Kanye is inadvertently leaking news that LVMH are going to be buying Supreme. I'm not there. But either way, it's a fucking bizarre thing to say because essentially he didn't address any of the points that Tremaine made in his post. Zero. The accusation that he was talking bad about Virgil, you know, during his time when he was at Louis Vuitton, before he got the job, when he got the job, when he was sick, when he was approaching death and even post-death. He hasn't addressed any of those things, but he basically said, oh, you know, but I don't know, sent you kind of thing. And it, it, it's war, so they're going to 